if we're going to be looking at this problem, is John, all right? What they're asking us to do is evaluate for sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, actually, all the six trigonometric functions. So, when we are evaluating for sine, cosine, and tangent, there's a couple ways that we can do that. One, if we have the points on the unit circle, we can use which coordinates the sine, cosine, and tangent relate to, right? Or if we don't have the points on the unit circle, then we can use a right triangle, right? Because remember, sine represents, um, Kyle, sine represents the y coordinate when you have the point on the unit circle, right? When the triangle has that in your points on the unit circle, sine also represents opposite over hypotenuse. So if I look at this point right here, are these points that are familiar with me on the unit circle? No. So what I'm going to want to do is draw this to create a triangle. All right. So um, if you guys want to think of these in decimal form, right? You know, that's roughly that's 0.6666 repeating, and this one's going to be one um, one one point. I'm sorry, 2.5. Right? Roughly. And actually, I'll even make this. Let's make that one, that's two. OK? So if I was going to go and plot this point, all right? Because remember, whenever you're going to point, it doesn't matter if it's fractions or whatever. Well, 2 thirds, that's like 0.6666 on yeah, repeating. So that's like about right there. And then I got to go to 2.5. So let's go up one more. So 0.66 and then 1, 2, 2.5. All right? So we went from the origin. There's our point. What we're going to do is we need to create a triangle. All right? And remember, we need to create a triangle where our angle is going to be our central angle. So if you guys remember, what we did to do that is from your point, you draw a direct line <laughs> that is going to be perpendicular to your x-axis. The we reason why we do that is to create a right triangle. Because for us to apply our trigonometric functions, we have to have a right triangle. So wherever your point is, I don't care what quadrant it is, Draw a perpendicular line right to your x-axis. Then all of our angles are going to be what we call our central angles. Meaning it's going to be angle with the vertex at the center. So now that is going to be my angle. And if you guys can see, for this triangle, my adjacent side is 2 thirds, and my opposite side is 5 halves. But remember, guys, this point, that point is not on the unit circle, is it? So for me to be able to find, um, obviously, I could find the tangent. But for me to find my hypotenuse, I need to apply the Pythagorean theorem. So I can just say 5 halves squared plus 2 thirds squared equals c squared. Well, that's going to be 25 over 4 plus 4 over 9 equals c squared. Now again, looking at this, we're going to have to go ahead and obviously combine like terms, right? So we'd have to go and look in this. And I don't have my calculator with me. But you guys will see we have to multiply by 9 over 9 and 4 over 4. So let's see, 4, so that'd be 225, 9 times 25? No. 225? Yeah. So we have 225 over 36 plus 16 over 36 equals c squared. You can add those up. So now it's going to be 241 over 36 equals c squared. Take the square root. Take the square root. Um, we know, obviously, that's going to be uh, 6. I'm not really to issue of 241. Um, 15 times 15 is 225. I don't think I can simplify that. If I can, you guys can let me know. But So therefore, my hypotenuse is going to be square root of 241 divided by 6. Now that I have the adjacent, the opposite, and the hypotenuse, can I find all the trigonometric functions? Yeah. Yes, of course you can. So you could say sine of theta. Remember, on a triangle, is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's 5 halves over the square root of 241 divided by 6. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. 2 thirds divided by the square root of 241 over 6. The tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. 5 halves divided by 2 thirds. 
Now, don't get me wrong, guys. We're going to have to go ahead and simplify each one of these. And I know it's a little bit extra, uh, extra work here, but again, you can multiply by the reciprocals. And you know what? To keep this problem simplified, let's just, uh, yeah, let's do, we can do it. And then here, I'd multiply by 3 halves. Does everybody see what I've done so far and why I've done it? I know it's a little bit extra work over here, but that's, that's why I gave you this problem so you guys can see and not be so afraid of these fractions. So over here, we have 5 times. So this obviously goes to 1, that obviously goes to 1, and that obviously goes to 1. So therefore, the sine of theta is 30 over 2 square root of 241. Now again, we can't leave it here. Here is going to be 12 over 3 times the square root of 241. And then over here is going to be 15 over 4. Now obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we can't leave our answer with the square root. So again, then we have to go ahead and rationalize the denominator. By um, <coughs> rationalizing the denominator, you guys can also know that I can simplify this to 15, right? I can simplify that to 4. And that's going to be um, simplified as well. So now my final answer is going to be 15 times square root of 241. Two, square root of 241 times square root of 241 is just going to be 241. Over here, multiplying this, it's going to be 4 times square root of 241. All over, square root of 241 times square root of 241 is 241. And then here's going to be 15 over 4. All right? Anybody have any questions on that? Remember, if I was going to go through, um, yes? Sure, I'll go through those. I think I said it. It said uh, find all the solutions. Find six trigonometric, right? Yeah. So if I was going to go and find the cosecant of theta, remember that's just the reciprocal. So now that's going to be square root of 241 over 6 divided by 5 halves. The secant of theta is just going to be reciprocal of that, square root of 241 over 6 divided by 2 thirds. And the cotangent of theta is going to equal 2 thirds divided by 5 halves. Again, I can just multiply, um, multiply by my reciprocal. So just multiply by 2 over 5, 2 over 5. 3 over 2 times 3 over 2. 2 over 5, 2 over 5. Why do we like multiplying by a reciprocal? Because now we know our denominator is going to multiply to 1. And now I can just multiply across. Well, this can simplify. That's just going to leave me with the 3. These will simplify. That will leave me with the 2. Um, those won't simplify. So now when I multiply across, I'm just left with the square root of 241 over 15. Over here, I'm just going to have the square root of 241 over 4. And over here, I'm going to have 4 over 15. Okay, so that would be your six trigonometric functions. You guys have that written down? 